So hello everyone, welcome today to um, Dalhousie's Academic Exploration Series. We are presenting from the Site Co-op Office and giving you a bit of information about the Science Co-op programs. We will be recorded for this session so that students will be able to access this at a later date. The format for our presentation today is to provide an overview of the Science Co-op programs, the supports and services available to Science Co-op students, an overview of the science co-op employment landscape, history, and trends, and a panel discussion with our guests, Alexander Fenton, uh, Executive Director at Supernova, and Nolan White, our science co-op student ambassador and student. We have the pleasure of having these two today as Alexandra has been the supervisor of Nolan, so it'll be an interesting experience to hear from. Nolan isn't here at the moment, but we anticipate that he will likely join um, towards the end of the presentation. So before I hand it on over to Wu, I will introduce everyone. So Wu is a student development coordinator for Science Co-op. And we have Claire, who is the employer development science coordinator, um, not just for science, but for the industries that evolve around science and other industries within our Site Co-op programs. And we have Nolans, who is a science student uh, ambassador, as well as um, a co-op student, and as I mentioned previously, um, a previous co-op student of Alexander. And we have Alexander, who is a co-op employer, um, who has quite a bit of experience with that, and um, has been, again, uh, Nolan's former uh, supervisor. So with that, um, Wu, I'm going to hand it on over to you. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining the presentation. Uh, we're really happy that you're interested in the co-op program. So hopefully this presenta uh, presentation will give you a little bit more information about what co-op entails. Um, and we also hope to answer some of your questions. So I will just turn my camera off for now. Okay, so what is co-op and why do co-op? Um, co-op is a formal educational program. Um, it integrates periods of academic study with periods of relevant and paid work experience. Um, students who successfully complete three work terms are awarded a co-op education degree designation when, when you graduate. Um, Co-op is designed to enhance your academic experience. Um, it gives you real world work experience, career connections, and obviously employment. So let's dive into some of these benefits in more detail. So Claire, I will hand it to you. Um. Yeah, sorry, it took me a second to turn the mic back on. Thank you, Wu. Uh, so hi, everyone. I'm Claire. I work on the employer engagement side of things with Site Co-op Office. So, um, so scientific research is one of the many market segments that I work with. It is my role to engage and collaborate with companies to develop, nurture, and maintain our um, relationships. So in short, I help companies to learn to learn more about co-op program at Dow. I help them with campus recruitment and engagement and you know, a lot of other relevant issues. So we work with a variety of co-op employees from both public and private sectors, as you can um, see in the PowerPoint. So there are a lot of these past roles that all has put here. So I think these are like this some really amazing um, a really amazing list. So um, there, is, there is really a very broad range of industries a science student can apply their skill set to. Um, so I guess I don't have many to add to this list, as you, can, as you can see already. We work with a lot of government branches and departments that need policy analysts, project management, research, etc. And every year we have many research roles posted by Dow's professors at labs or other research facilities. So they're not all lab jobs that you can that you need to stay indoors. Sometimes they are in different cities, or you get to work in ships, um, on ships in the sea. So they can be very, very different. Uh, for instance, 
Last week, I've just seen two amazing students, one's from sustainability, another is from marine biology, hired by an aquaculture farm, farm in Lunenburg to work on a shellfish development project in this upcoming summer. So their job include working with reporting office. Also, sometimes they get to get out of the field to collect sampling. So it's like a combination of many things. Um, this year, we already have scientific research roles posted in and outside of Nova Scotia. A few places I have um, on top of my head right now is in Yukon, Ontario, PI, New Brunswick, uh, British Columbia. So they are like um, in a lot of different places. One of the growing industry trends I've seen personally um, is a growth of small to medium sized companies in food science. So in general, I think there is a growing need for sustainability across all the industries out there, not just in the uh, traditional industries such as like agriculture, agriculture, pharmaceutical companies, but also there are many new companies, many emerging new companies, uh, you know, with new products to reinvent the ways we produce and the ways we consume. Some of them are startups. Um, some of them are already into the mature stage of a startup. So um, I've seen a couple of students working in such companies in the past summer. And there are also a existing major players, some of them in the market who want the change to become more sustainable um, on many levels of their operations. For instance, we have uh, Tesla Motors who is looking for who is looking to hire interns in environmental science, physics and atmospheric science, chemistry students to work in their material research team. So like there's a really, um, a, a lot of things are changing across the country in many different fields that you can think about, about your future career. So ooh, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, thank you, Claire. Um, I'll add, I'll just add that um, co-op gives you the opportunity, obviously, to test drive uh, different work environments and therefore explore different career options uh, because every work term is four months long. That's really a really uh, great amount of time to explore a particular area of interest in your discipline, right? And let's say you're really confident in what you want to pursue. Um, you can conceivably use each successive work term to dive deeper into a particular role or area of interest. And in this way, it'll help you to cultivate uh, depth of experience and knowledge within your discipline. Back to you, Claire. Well, I don't have a lot to add uh, to this page. I think, uh, you know, when I was um, Speaking before, I basically included all my thoughts on both of these slides. So ooh, do you have anything to add on, you know, how to encourage students to grow their network? For sure, yes. Um, so during your work term, uh, you will be making vital connections and you'll be building rapport with your employers and colleagues. So out of this experience, you're going to be building a very strong professional network even before you graduate. Um, this is a sample list of employers that we worked with in the past and who have hired our students. And as you can see, and as Claire has said, uh, we have a variety of sectors and industries, governmental agencies, research institutions, small to large companies in the private sector, nonprofit organizations, and much more. Um, and some of them are local and some are farther afield. Site Cohop has developed a national network of employers. Even um, some of our students have even done international work terms. Um, we have many strong relationships with our employers. So many of them continue to hire term after term. Uh, students who are successful in their work terms are, are often asked to return for a second or even third work term, and some have even been um, offered full-time employment upon graduation. And we're also continuously expanding our network uh, with new employers who are eager to hire our co-op students. Um, 
And you also have the agency along with our support uh, to conduct your own job search, to find your own opportunities and to grow your own network. Uh, and I also want to point out that being a part of co-op gives you access to jobs um, that are for co-op students only because some of the, our employers um, have funding requirements. So work terms are paid, obviously, and you are paid a competitive wage uh, and sometimes even relocation expenses. And what a paid work term means is that employers value your work uh, and they expect high levels of productivity and professionalism from you. And it also means that you get to work on projects that directly contribute to the organization. So it goes without saying that you will be graduating with real world work experience. You'll further develop skills that you already have and you will gain new ones. So this is a sample list of skills that our science co-op students have gained and cultivated during their co-op journeys. Uh, it's important to know that, um, note that not only will you be gaining technical skills uh, that are relevant to your discipline, You'll also be developing non-technical skills such as leadership, communication, teamwork, time management, etc. And at the end of your journey upon graduation, uh, you'll have the advantage of entering the job market with one full year of professional experience on your resume. So co-op is a supported experience. Uh, being a part of the program means that you've access to the services and supports that are listed here. We will be supporting you in job searching, resume, cover letter writing, interviewing, and we'll be providing you co-op advising throughout your journey. And you'll have access to job postings in my career, um, employability skills workshops and webinars, employer info sessions, and a lot more. So I'll just end with some basic information about our programs. Um, as you can see, we currently have 11 science co-op student uh, co-op programs. We are hoping to expand this list in the future. Um, and you see a typical alternating work study sequence, which consists of a summer, a winter and a fall work term. Uh, though your exact sequence really will depend on the program that you are in. So the co-op fees are as follows. They are $300 for the orientation course, $500 per work term, and the approximate hourly range ranges from $15 to $20 an hour, again, depending on the discipline, the role, the industry, the sector, and, and which work term that you're in. Missions take place once a year between February and May. This year, the emissions window is from February 14th to May 9th, uh, decisions will be sent out in early June and eligible students will receive an email with instructions on how to apply. So if you have questions about the program, please feel free to email askcoop at dal.ca or myself. My email is included there in the slide. We're really happy to support you and help you however we can. Um, and I just want to end right now with a video about the program. First, you learn the classroom. And then you put it to work in the real world. It's everything I hope for. I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do. You don't even feel like a student anymore. You feel like you're in the real world and you're making a real difference. The experience is more than just like a line on your resume. It actually is so impactful and so valuable. I have absolutely felt like I was part of the team from day one. It's hard to picture how you're going to use everything that you've learned in class and co-op gives you that opportunity to apply everything you've learned in the classroom to the real world and see the bigger picture. 
A lot of the work we do is only with industry partners, so it's all applied and real. Having your work have meaning is, is, is completely different from being in the classroom. You can actually see it. You can actually see that what you're doing is contributing towards something, and that's the best feeling in the world. I've also had the opportunity to really become very confident in, and really see myself and my future a lot more clearly. It gives you experience so early on in your career, and it allows you to meet so many new people who could have the opportunity to open a new door for you for a career after school. I feel like I'm doing some work that actually matters. It's one of the reasons why I decided to do engineering, because I want to do something that impacts the world positively. I always wanted to be an engineer, and because I feel like I am already becoming one. I'm, I'm excited, and I can see a path forward. Um, it's been really eye-opening and inspiring. It's gotten me really excited about Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Willie, that was great. Um, so for everyone who is uh, is here and for those who are watching the recorded version, um, or for, <laughs> for Aria who is here, uh, welcome. And um, for those of students who will be joining, um, we'll just, I'll put a message in the chat that um, we'll save all our questions till the end. So you will be able to ask us questions, um, but we'll be doing that towards the end of the presentation. And now we're going to go on with the um, the panel uh, op, um, section of our presentation. Okay, so hi Nolan. I see that you have joined us. Thank you. Uh, Nolan White is a marine biology student who has already completed his three co-op work terms. Congratulations. Um, and Nolan is also one of our science co-op student ambassadors. And then we also have here um, Alexandra Fenton, who is the executive director at Supernova and a longtime supervisor with our science and, and other programs for a uh, site co-op. So Nolan, we just want to ask you um, maybe if you can speak uh, a little bit about the three work term opportunities that you've had throughout your co-op journey. Yeah, certainly. Um, so my first co-op began, I guess, the summer of 2019, and I had the opportunity to work at the aquaculture lab for Dalhousie's agricultural campus out in Truro. And that was a great experience because I didn't have any specific job that I was doing each day. Uh, I worked with different graduate students, different professors on their research, and really got introduced to as wide a spectrum um, of topics related to biology, aquaculture, um, as I possibly could. And then my second term was slightly interrupted. Uh, sorry, can you guys hear me now? Is that better? Yes, thank you. Sweet. And then my second term, uh, it was interrupted due to COVID in the summer of 2020, but I did secure a job working with Dr. Stephanie Colombo on her research as labs were allowed to open around June. So it was a shortened work term, but it was very interesting because I was the lead research assistant on a publicized piece of work. So that was a great experience as well. Now, my third term was actually with Supernova as um, an instructor for their ocean sciences section. And while it was online, it was a very good experience because, I mean, I worked with Alexandra here. Uh, she was the lead of that. And it really opened my eyes to, I guess, the education side of science. And yeah. Nolan, I wonder if I might be able to ask you to turn your video on if that's all right. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to figure that out because I was having some internet issues and I don't know if the bandwidth would allow it is why I kept it off. No problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nolan, that sounds like such uh, an amazing and interesting co-op journey. Um, I wonder if you can 
specifically speak a little bit more about uh, your experience with Supernova and working with Alexandra, or maybe some of the takeaways that you learned from Alexandra? Yeah, so I think um, one of the biggest takeaways that I had um, in one of our final meetings, it was really what resonated with me was to not be afraid to reach out and secure that network opportunity later on that these are this is the network that you're going to build but it's it's really up to you to determine how strong those relationships are going to be so mm -hmm. reach out to your employers afterwards figure out if there's any potential opportunities in the future um, i actually maintained working part-time um, a semester after my co-op uh, simply because I had the time, the opportunity was there, and it was something that I enjoyed doing. So I would say that was my biggest takeaway. Uh, now from the job itself, it was really eye-opening to be working with a bunch of different students with different strengths, different talents, and really different interests. Um, so yeah, I don't know, opening my eyes to the world of education was another big thing that I took away. Thanks, Nolan. Alexander, I'm going to turn it over to you and ask you what your experience was working with Nolan. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, so Nolan's role with Supernova was to deliver and develop uh, ocean-based programming to youth. Um, so that's uh, a big part of Supernova's mandate is STEM education more broadly, but the specific project that Nolan worked on was ocean-based, um, which obviously reflected his own skills and talents. Uh, so it was wonderful to have Nolan join our team um, for this project, particularly because uh, he was able to bring his own expertise um, and bring his own personality to the development of the curriculum that we were working on. And I mean, as with all of the delivery that we do, co-op students are critical to our mission and goals um, because they bring such enthusiasm and unique talent to our team. So do you say that kind of enthusiasm and personality specifically are some of the things that Nolan brought to the work term or to your work environment? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was um, a, a bit of a strange work term for us because it was the, the first time we'd been uh, trying to remotely host uh, programs and, and staff. So I don't think Nolan that we actually ever met in person. So. Uh, it was a bit of a, a, an interesting work term for all of us, but I, I think no one really took it in stride. Um, he did a fantastic job of putting forward the programs and, in fact, paved the way for the success of the school programming to be continued online. And, in fact, uh, we're thinking about continuing it virtually indefinitely because it went so well. It, is, there, are there, is there a specific thing about um, what went well, like what the strategy was, or maybe what approach that... Um, maybe Nolan instigated or kind of helped develop that really stood out? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, part of it was designing the curriculum to be applicable for online delivery. Um, so that was a big piece, of course, was sort of adapting our typical model of delivery, which is very hands-on and in-person, um, to be able to deliver it uh, virtually. Awesome. Way to go, Nolan. Uh, thank you. Um, just another point to add that um, Alexander kind of mentioned there is one of another things that I found in terms of skill development was my ability to work on a team remotely um, was somewhat, it was pretty lacking coming into that work, work term, but not only to work on a team remotely, but to manage a class remotely and to lead remotely. Those are definitely skills that may translate for some people but for most it's a very difficult transition to go from in person to remote so the ability to have that opportunity and to develop those skills especially with the remote world the uh, how it seems to be somewhat indefinite at this point uh, those are definitely invaluable skills that i'm very grateful to have developed at the time yeah that's a great point nolan Go ahead, Alexandra. I was just going to say, yeah, it was something that we, we didn't even really know how to train for at the time. So that was definitely, um, you know, the co-op students that had that term, no one included, had to sort of 
figure out how to be able to deliver to a classroom that, you know, it might even just be sort of a, a blank screen with one teacher or, or no, no kids actually like actively providing feedback. So um, it was definitely a, a really complicated situation that the co-op students dealt with uh, flawlessly, I would have to say. Great. So Nolan, just back to you again. Um, if we can ask you to reflect on your whole journey, um, how did you see yourself grow from work term to work term? Uh, that's a big question. Um, I would say there's a couple key transition points. In my first term, I was very hesitant to do anything on my own because I was somewhat fearful that I would be wrong or incorrect. I would mess up. And by the time each co-op term um, and what I'm, this is a key part of the program that I really appreciate is that there's at least one review by your employer throughout the term that allows you to recognize some of your downfalls and to work on those, to improve them. So in the latter part of my first term, that was the key aspect that I worked on, more confidence in the work that I was doing. Now in the second term, when I was the only individual allowed in the lab besides the lab manager because of COVID restrictions, it really somewhat forced me to work pretty or completely independently. And that also reinforced the confidence that I somewhat lacked in the first work term because there was no one there for me to confirm. I couldn't wait three hours for an email message for a response or 30, 45 minutes for a text. If I needed to make a decision then and there, that was the decision that I had to own and the decision I had to make. And again, uh, I somewhat mentioned it earlier, but in my final co-op term with Supernova, it was really developing those remote, remote learning skills, remote leadership skills, and figuring out how to manage, uh, I guess, the crazy virtual world that was present at the time. And that also translated over to my classes, where I was more engaged in my classes the following two semesters, despite it being online, despite it being through a screen, because I recognized there were some students for me that stood out most were those very few that we're providing feedback, asking questions through a screen. Is it fair to say that by the end of your third work term, you, you feel fairly comfortable professionally and, um, and more confident to be out in the work world? I would definitely say so. Um, the last few months I've been in the process of searching for post-grad jobs and the realization that these jobs won't just be a four month summer term, but will be something that I will work at until either I find something else or maybe that does become my job. Uh, I don't know yet, kind of just going to see how things go. But looking at my resume, building my resume and reflecting back on the past two and a half, three years, it really does show the true benefit that co-op co provides um, because I have so many different opportunities. The opportunities that I had were in so many it was all similar, it was all ocean science based, but the sectors that they were in were so vastly different that the different skills that I've developed, the different experiences I've had really unite into what I hope to be a strong application of an undergrad student. Awesome, thank you. Alexandra, you supervise many of our Dalhousie Science Co-op students and many, uh, you know, you and your colleagues at Supernova, many site co-op students. How have our students added value to Supernova? So in my time since I started at Supernova, I've probably supervised over 50 co-op students. Um, wow. And we actually have gone on, our, our team is quite small. Um, I, less than 15 and six of the people who currently work for us were former co-op students. So we, we recruit heavily when we're expanding to those co-op students. And one of the things that we have loved about hiring co-op students is that they bring such a diversity of talent and unique perspectives to our workplace. So um, where some employers 
you know, might be a little bit reticent to hire co-op students because there is, you know, the onboarding and training every four months. Um, we really love it because it brings a lot of new energy to our workplace. You know, we have different students every term. We get to meet some new faces, welcome new people into our team. Um, and then they each bring different things to the, the classroom and to the experience for the kids that we work with. Um, so it's been, um, yeah, it's, we, we will continue to hire co-op students because it, it really does add a lot of value to our workplace. Were you a co-op student yourself? I was not. I actually did art. So um, I would have if I could have, <laughs> but I wasn't. For you personally, Al how, what do you personally get out of being like a mentor or a supervisor to co-op students? Well, more broadly, I would say one of maybe my favorite part of my job in general is working with my team um, and being a mentor to, to the students who come on board um, and to the, the full-time employees who work with us. So I really love having the co-op students come into our workplace because I learn so much from them. You know, I have you know, co-op students who are in electrical and computer engineering who tell me all about what they're studying and our ocean science students and biology students. So I, I learn a lot every day about the different sort of applications and the variety of STEM fields that the students are studying. And it really brings a lot of variety and interest to our workplace. And I, I just, I, I really love connecting with the students and learning about their goals and ambitions and seeing how I can help them to realize those goals. Awesome, thank you. Um, Alexander, before um, before uh, we know, after we, we will finish up with Nolan with a question, but before we open it up to students after that, do you have anything else that you wanted to add um, that I may not have asked? Um, so I had a co-op student a couple of terms ago um, who was applying for his first ever co-op and he said that what he did was he sat down and he thought about the types of jobs that he wanted to get experience from in his three co-op and really strategically applied. So he wanted to do one in communication and one that was very lab and one that was very industry. Um, and it, so I think that having sort of a strategic goal for what kind of co-op you want is a really, um, a really smart plan because it gives you such a, well, an idea of a, what you really enjoy doing, but maybe almost as importantly, what you don't enjoy doing. Uh, and that can be really informative for moving forward. Awesome. Thank you. So, Nolan, last question. Uh, now that you've completed your co-op journey, I uh, just want to know what your biggest takeaways are and maybe some advice for future co-op students. I would say, um, well, the first one is don't be afraid to take risks. Um, take those chances. It is a four month term. Um, if you don't end up enjoying the job, that's perfectly okay. That's something that, okay, now I can check. You don't have to spend your three terms searching for the job that you deem to be your dream career. If you find something that isn't, uh, I guess, in line with your interests, that's great. That's something that you've been able to narrow down. Um, and then you can focus your interests elsewhere. Um, that wasn't the case for me. I had three terms that I really enjoyed. Now I'm at the trouble of trying to figure out what I'm going to do now. Um, but another piece of advice would be to really try and make a connection with your employer. Um, because they, for the most part, they're going to put the effort in. You just have to reciprocate that. And because the more, the more engaged you are with them, the stronger relationship you have with them, the more opportunities they're going to give you. They'll, they may stray from what initially was written down as your job description and give you opportunities that you could have never even thought of simply because you asked the right questions. So, yeah. Thanks, Thank Nolan. That was so insightful. Yes, thank you, Nolan and Alexandra um, and Claire as well and Wu uh, for giving us this information and all of this insight. Um, I know we have one student on here right now. Araya, do you have any questions that you would like to, to ask any of our panelists? 
Oh my. Pretty spot here. Um, I just had a general question about applying. I guess so. I'm a first year student, and uh, I don't know how to word it. Uh, online, it says that co-op applications for science students opens in February, so I assume it's open right now. Correct. Yeah. Um. So when does the application close then? So the applications close on May 9th. May 9th. May 9th. So you've got a good you've got a good two month window there to get your application in. And in the chat box there, I um I copied the email for Wu. So um we have Wu, who's one of our panelists here, student science student development coordinator. So you could reach out to Wu to ask your questions as well, get a bit more information. Um, it, but you're, you know, if you'd like to ask it now, you're happy. To, we're happy to accommodate that. And then um, you can also email askcoop at dal.ca, and they'll also be able to direct you to where you can apply. Okay, cool. Um, and this is one more question. Yeah. So I obviously have my GPA from last term. So if I wait until May, would my GPA then be changed, like for the marks that I have this term? or I, I kind of worded that poorly, sorry. But. They, they would, um, that's a good question. Um, I believe they do, you know, at the time that they're sorting through, the faculty co-op advisors are the ones who sort through the applications and they would be sorting through the applications um, pretty much after that deadline. So, um, you know, mid-May to end of May, they're going through the co-op applications. And at that point, they'd be looking at your CGPA. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, before we um, uh, depart with each other here, everyone, Nolan, I wonder if you might be able to provide a little bit of insight um, for science co-op students about maybe how you stay organized. How do you manage um, a job search term with a with a study term since they happen, you know, at the same time? Um. So I guess I'll explain how I ultimately did it rather than what I did at the start when I did my first term because I was just chaotic to say the least. Um, but I really, I keep a schedule for all my classes, all my assignments, when I should be doing work on this lab report or this. And what I did was I really defined a couple hours each day to look for jobs, apply for jobs, go to the co-op advisor's office, book appointments, and I really just set a regimented schedule. Therefore, I had free time. I wasn't going to, I guess, do something else when I should be applying for jobs. Um, because what's interesting about how my career operates is there could be a job that's up there for three days. They have people apply for it and then it's gone because they found the proper applicant. So staying on the website every day, figuring out, okay, this job was just posted, looking through. And for me, it was, there's a lot of concern at first about, oh, do I have to relocate? Is this a job that I really want? No, really, if you apply for it, you can turn down a job offer. Uh, there are stipulations, there are rules with the co-op office about how many you can turn down. But if you get to an interview and realize this is truly not a company that I would like to work for, I have done it in the past where I said, I emailed them directly after my interview and said, I apologize, but this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. So kind of straying away from the original question, but really it is all about trying to manage your classes, but just setting a small period of time. Because if you, for example, on Saturday afternoon, go through and apply to a whole bunch of different jobs, and then the next Saturday, go through the same thing. You may have missed jobs that were opened up on Monday and closed on Thursday. That's a great point, Nolan. Um, Nolan, I wonder also if you, you know, you have been a student ambassador for Science Co-op. Um, are there kind of frequently asked questions that students ask you that you might be able to speak to? Um, as the ambassador for marine biology and sustainability, um, I don't really have a whole lot of students coming to me for questions because um, the marine biology, I guess, faculty advisor, uh, 
Nancy, she's great. So she's really kind of their go-to that when they go on the Dow website, this is the professor I'm going to go to, as well mm -hmm. as Caitlin Burek. She's excellent. So the majority of questions I have are resume, resume interview related, help me with this cover letter, stuff like that. Excellent. And in this case, um, we now have, uh, Caitlin has uh, moved on to another position. So we have yes. Wu here who will be um, your, for, for anyone listening to this recording and for you, Araya, um, if you join the co-op program, Wu will be your, uh, your, your student co-op advisor that will be able to help you with that coaching, the resume and cover letter review. Um, you know, if you need some to a discussion on strategies and how to approach your job search, similar to kind of the strategies that Nolan just suggested, um, then uh, she would be the person to go to. So with that, I just want to thank everybody, thank all our panelists, thank you uh, for our our student who has come to get this information for all of you listening to the recording. Before we depart, does anybody have any less comments, anything else they wanted to add? Um, I would just say, uh, as an employer, I can't stress the importance enough of proofreading your cover letters before you send them on. Um, I read a lot of cover letters that aren't actually addressed to me or have nothing to do with the job that they are applying for. Um, I know that most people have form cover letters and that's fine, um, things that they you know, want to tell to everyone, but it really does make a huge difference if you really want the job to add some specific details about how you will apply your skills and, and your background to the job in question. Uh, it also makes a big difference in interviews and well, it, as well as in the cover letter to show that you've actually read the description description for the job thoroughly. We put a lot of time and energy into making sure that the job descriptions are thorough and um, that they contain all of the information that you'll need. Uh, so that is some, something that's pretty clear to us in interviews is whether or not the, the job is actually something that you are aware of the details about. Um, and the final thing I would say is um, there are a lot of jobs out there that list a million skills that you need to have and competencies that they say that you must have. I would say apply for the jobs even if you don't have every single thing on the list because often, more often than not, those skills are negotiable. That's great advice. Thank you, Alexandra. And I would just add to that too. Um, I'm sure that it's quite competitive, the jobs that you are posting. So um, just to drive Alexandra's point home, you want your application to stand out. They, you know, your employer wants to see why you want to work for them. Um, and how your skills apply. So just remember that um, you know you are <laughs> you are applying with other people. Um, thank you very much, Alexander, for taking the time out of your day to speak with us and lend your perspective. Um, we're very happy to have you as a site co-op uh, employer, and um, and for you to have, have you as a, a supervisor who cares so much about the students and their experience. So thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, Nolan, thank you as well for taking the time out to tell us about your experience as a, a student, um, your experience with uh, Alexandra and um, your, some of your strategies and your tips. Uh, I have no doubt they'll prove very useful um, for students. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you to Wu and Claire for uh, giving a bit of information about how our site co-op office can support science students. So thank you again. And thank you to Araya for uh, joining. And uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to Wu or ask co-op for more information about applying. And with that, I'll say um, thank you, everyone, and have a great week. <laughs>